Praise the Lord. I'm Gary Bailey, and this is the I Bible School. We're coming up on lesson number 29, talking about uh, the substance of prayer. So join us for this great lesson. Praise the Lord. The substance of prayer. What do we mean by that? Uh, what I mean is, uh, according to the scriptures, uh, there are things in the Bible that are spiritual attributes that are measurable. For instance, uh, the Bible talks about little faith, great faith, no faith. Uh, it talks about love and grace. You can uh, receive more grace. And uh, it talks about prayer. Prayer is uh, is measurable you know in in uh, Romans chapter 12 let me get over here Romans chapter 12 and verse uh, verse 3 uh, Paul's writing and he says for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So everyone, every one of us have received a certain capacity for faith. And uh, we uh, need to understand that uh, uh, that we all can grow in these things. And so we can have great faith, little faith, abundant faith, <laughs> all kinds of different, uh, different things. But the fact of the matter is, is there's a substance to it and we, we, we need to keep that in mind and when we talk about uh, prayer there is a substance to prayer in Ephesians 3 and verse 20 uh, Paul says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us now this power that he speaks of uh, obviously uh, he's able to do in us according to that measure of power. Um, this exceeding abundantly above means more than, more than. Uh, in the measure, it can also uh, refer to a distribution. Uh, in the measure of the power that is distributed from us. So however much power is flowing from us, uh, determines what we receive as far as exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. James chapter 5 and verse 16 tells us that the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. That's the amplified version. But uh, the King James simply tells us the uh, effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much praise god so uh as you pray you know um, god is looking at that prayer in hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7 uh he's talking about uh, jesus who in the days well let me see if we're talking about jesus who we're talking about here um ephesians chapter or hebrews chapter 5 And uh, verse 7, praise God. Um, he says, uh, he's talking about Jesus Christ. Uh, I'll start at verse 6, uh, verse 5. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. We're definitely talking about Jesus Christ here. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. So we see that Jesus offered up his prayers to God. And 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5, uh, 
Peter writes and says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So in one sense, as we're building a building, a spiritual house, one stone upon another and through prayer, uh, through praise and worship, uh, through the sacrifice of praise, we're building up a spiritual house. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 4, we see that uh, Cornelius uh, built up his prayers so much so that it, was, it became a memorial before God. Uh, let's read here in verse 4 of Acts 10. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. So not only his prayers, but his giving impacted God. You know, not just a little bit, but he'd filled up his vials of prayer in heaven. Psalm 56 and verse 8, uh, the psalmist says, Thou tellest my wanderings, and put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? God's measuring our tears. Think about that. In Revelation 5 and verse 8, when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. So let's uh, let's look at this. Golden vials or go golden vessels of prayer, full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. That's an amazing thing. In Revelation chapter 8, verses 3 through 5, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquake. Now, that's a very important verse because literally this is what we see what's happening. Prayers are being offered up to God and placed in vials, golden vials. Uh, we could call them golden vessels of prayer. And uh, as we see these vials become filled, uh, they are the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar, which is before the throne. And the smoke of this incense uh, of the prayers, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascends to God. And then the Bible tells us the angel takes the censer, fills it, fills it with the fire of the altar, and casts it to the earth. I believe these are uh, just uh, symbolic of uh, and I believe they actually do this, but this is the answer to the prayers returning to earth. Uh, so as the vials are filled up, then the angel can take of those vials off the off the altar, cast it to earth, and what what's the result? Voices, thunderings, lightning, and earthquake manifestation, physical, literally physical manifestation. So power is released through prayer, and uh, then God comes. So I want to encourage you to continue to pray. Continue to pray and build up that substance of prayer to offer up to God so that uh, God has sufficient things to work with when you, um, when you, when you offer up uh, prayer. Uh, he'll have enough prayer to work with so that he can return the answer. Praise God. God bless you. This was lesson number 29. So stay with us for lesson number 30. Praise God. Mm -hmm.